In today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you how to do this amazing sci-fi terrain. All right, welcome to another Artist Opus tutorial. Check out these, they turned out amazingly. Super weathered, verdigreed and rusted, uh, bronze and iron. Uh, sci-fi terrain universally requested uh, the OSL on sci-fi terrain as the topic for our next video they turned out really well and what I really want to hammer home to people is all the techniques in this video you can chop and change wherever you like so you can put that verdigree on the brass or the bronze you can put the rust on the um, iron if you like or you can put it on the gold sections really doesn't matter and the OSL kind of you can go for the orange or the blue which everyone takes your fancy hopefully you should be armed with a selection of techniques and then you can just pick and choose which aspects you prefer the most and apply them however you like so any kind of aged weathered sci-fi terrain should be a brilliant recipient for all of these techniques so please give the video a like if you like it please comment please subscribe hit that bell notification to be kind of notified of future content and let's get stuck in so here we have some beautifully shiny uh, pieces that have been sprayed with retributor armor now i've done something very specific here i sprayed these uh, with a chaos black primer then i sprayed them with retributor armor from a 45 degree angle then i've hit them again as you can tell here from below with chaos black now what that's going to do is it's just going to give us a little bit more interest on any sections that are kind of rounded we're going to get this effect where they're they're fading from black to gold the gantries or whatever they are they have just been primed with a dark silver now for the next step we're making a slightly unusual mix here we've got some of our classic 950 black from Vallejo and I'm mixing it with some Doombo Brown. I love Doombo Brown. It's a lovely, warm, interesting color. But what I want here is basically a mix for kind of stippling in the recesses of our panels in the same way that you'd appreciate them with an airbrush if it was a tank. So I'm looking for something quite dark, but I don't want it to just be black or whatever. And I'd like it to be quite warm. So that's our color we're going for there. All right, so for this, I'm using a medium, but you could step down to a small and basically any panels, any recesses, uh, the gaps between them, uh, kind of areas around details, I'm looking to shade. Now it's important you do this before the highlight step because the highlight step is gonna fix any mistakes we make here. So like I said, any details, I'm just going around these to kind of darken the recesses around them down and then with our dry brushing, we'll be bringing it up. So don't worry if you hit areas that are gonna be sticking out that you want to be kind of drawing attention to. The idea is that we're just kind of shading between the lines on these areas. Uh, if it is upwards facing, do take a little bit more care because you do want these areas to be pretty shiny. With that done, a um, couple of points to note. Um, I primed these together for the black stage, so I had a line here knowing where this was gonna end up. That's been quite useful, so I've kind of primed, sorry, primed, brushed around there with the, with this stage because I've got the, the line to follow. I want it to get darker towards the top of the, um, the platform and all the black areas from underneath, I've tried to hit with this paint too. Um, any black areas, I'd, I'd want to be really dark brown. So on the subject of that, I've got my brown on my palette. I've got some Holger Blue, which I'm sure is gonna surprise you very much. I'm mixing a bit of that in to make it a bit darker and a bit more black. And then within these areas that we've already made darker, um, so again, like I said, jumping to a smaller brush may well be a good idea. I'm just gonna jump in and try and leave a lot of the brown. You just want these in the very recesses, but anywhere you wanna be particularly dark, then you can run down there and you wanna run in the middle of your previous stage. You're leaving a lot of that brown around the edge. Do jump to a small if that helps you with the control. All right, so with the brown pretty much run out on my palette, I'm three to eight pretty much exclusively blue black mix which I'm using quite heavily in the recessed areas. On this, I've used them a lot around the steps. I want it to look like that's had traffic there. And what I'm doing is I'm making use of this to start shading the silver, because it's perfect color for that. You can leave some of the brown if you want, but um, entirely up to you. Shading metallics is really forgiving uh, because metallics don't tend to be a smooth surface because they've got their flex of actual, um, uh, actual flex of metal in there. Uh, it's not a smooth surface. So what you have to do in terms of blending on it doesn't have to be nearly as smooth and we're paying to rain here so it's doubly forgiving. Now as a finishing touch I'm going in with pure Holger Blue. Uh, this is going to get knocked back by our wash and also by 
future dry brushing on the highlights anyway, so don't worry if it looks a bit extreme, but I'm just looking to add some kind of tarnished areas and levels of interest. Um, I've not got a specific plan here, I'm not aiming for specific areas, just kind of trying to blob it around a little bit, and this will add quite a lot to the overall effect. So I'm taking a little bit of Retributor and a tiny bit of the silver, because the silver is so incredibly strong. I've used my dampening pad first, that will help the paint leave the bristles and help things not get oversaturated. And then what we're doing here is remove a little bit more than that. This will cover pretty much instantly whatever we do. So I'm gonna start building up some texture. Now I'm bearing in mind the shapes that I try to exaggerate with my priming. So what I mean by that is this is a cylinder. Um, I've hit it from below with a black and then I've stippled it from below with a brown and I've also stippled the lower half of it brown. So I'm particularly gonna be stippling the upper, um, whatever portion this is, third, uh, with the silver to kind of suggest that it's more shiny on top. And I'm gonna be taking that approach all over. I'm gonna be doing general dry brushing, catching those edges, which is uh, the easy bit, really. I mean, areas like this stepped area, look at that. It's like cheating. Um, I'll be hitting all of the model like that, but some particular areas, uh, like this, uh, this top section, I'll be stippling more on the top and then dry brushing it all over again to suggest that the top of it is shiny. So wash number one is a strange mix. It is. Uh, any light sepia wash will do for this one, but um, it's Cassandora yellow and any light sepia wash, 50-50. Uh, and then into that, I put a tiny drop of our Holdra blue. Now that is because you're mixing yellow and blue there, you end up with a kind of slimy green tone, but because of the sepia kind of uh, background to it, it ends up being a, uh, it's not like a clean looking green, it's more of a sewagey looking green. For our next step, we're gonna mix up a very quick rough and ready watch. Now this is just a mix of two colors um, that are kind of within that turquoisey spectrum. We've got Ahriman Blue, you could use Sotec Green here if you wanted. Um, they're pretty much the same color. And then we've got a little bit of Gauze Blaster Green. Just diluting it with water here, not looking to do anything kind of super precise and the the effect that you get um, from diluting it with water in terms of the difference between diluting it with lamy medium is basically you'll you'll get it staying behind more looking drier like if you, you'll get a softer blend if you use lamy medium which is fine um, but if you do want to kind of make it look like it is collecting and pooling um, then I think doing it with water is is, uh, is is my preference anyway so I'm gonna be mainly sticking to recesses but you could actually wash the entire thing. If you do wash the entire thing, then in that case, I would probably use the medium just to get kind of a, a softer, more consistent effect. Now I'm gonna be using my favorite tool quite a lot here, which is just going in there with a finger and I'm not looking to do anything like mega precise whatsoever, but this will add a huge amount to the overall effect. So this is really starting to take shape, just one stage done on it. Uh, we can see a few areas where the uh, previous wash hasn't dried. I don't view that as an issue, it just gives it kind of uh, some nuance to the coloring. Do let gravity do its thing uh, as long as it's not gonna really pull too aggressively because it does make sense for some areas, like here for example. If things were working away from up above, it would be pulling there. So you don't need to fight it all the way, but uh, just don't let it do anything that is, uh, is gonna kind of ruin the overall final effect. Now jumping in with a quick different stage of washing for the platform. Just got Doomball Brown for a change watered down quite a lot and then we're going to take exactly the same approach here so kind of this thinness of wash is going to perform more as a filter on other sections but the big thing is to make sure that you catch those recesses which are a little bit fiddly so just use the same uh, sad brush that we've used this is a very old size three um, for kind of poking into those recesses and be a little, a little bit patient with them because it can be a bit fiddly okay so moving through to neat gauze blaster green this is a pretty bright color. We can scoop out all of our contamination from the previous step. I know that upsets all of you. Now I'm gonna be watering this down further. It is a far brighter color and this is gonna be a definitely a lighter application than our previous one. As I said, uh, part of the reason for doing the previous one heavy is to allow this to land within that. 
think I may take just a tiny bit of our Aframan Blue for coherency and kind of, for the sake of tying these together a little bit more. Part of the reason for leaving our, our recesses dark is because we, we get to, not only do we get a contrast between the light areas of our model and the dark areas of the model and the recesses, but we get a contrast between the dark areas of our recesses and then the light areas of the shading within the darkest areas of those recesses. Bit of a mouthful. But you're giving yourself an excuse for really high levels of contrast everywhere all over the model, and that's one of the things that helps the pieces look interesting. Okay, for the next step, we're using greenish white from AK. Um, any kind of pallid, sickly uh, flesh will do absolutely here though, or kind of a got a very light pastel white, anything like that. Now this is a big step up, and we are looking to be quite precise with this one, so I'm making the mix at the right consistency, just with water again. But what I'm gonna do is jump onto a significantly smaller brush, so I've got a double zero here, and that is gonna allow me to kind of place this exactly where I want it, which is gonna be within the previous sections that we've done, so. Now you can kind of fade this out, you can have it in certain areas, See, I'm just fading it out by adding water a couple of times there. You can have it concentrated in particular bits, it's entirely up to you kind of which approach you want to take with this. So while that's drying, I'm just going to grab some Troll Slayer Orange, mixing it in the same place on my palette that my Doomball Brown was, so it's getting dragged back a little bit. I am using my double zero here, and with it this stuff's pretty much dry, so, and I'm fine with it kind of getting mixed in a little bit. I'm going to basically do exactly the same step that I've done with the uh, kind of progressive verdigris turquoise colours and I'm going to be doing it with this. So choosing some specific spots, you can see I've hit areas with this with some verdigris beforehand and just going in there pretty neat. They're going to get diluted anyway if the areas are wet so don't worry about the fact that your paint is neat um, or very close to and uh, I'm just picking some random spots. I don't want to be literally like painting over something, I do want this to be pulling in the recesses, so make sure you don't just kind of flat layer something, do uh, keep it diluted enough so that it will behave like it's a, it's a wash rather than just a layer paint. So we're going straight to Fire Dragon Bright, again we're going to mix it on the same spot on the palette, and this is going to be popped primarily in the areas that we've hit with our previous stage. If you find any areas you do want to hit again, that's cool, but it will look better if you can have this going in areas which have been hit with the Troll Slayer. You could absolutely take this down uh, to other parts of the model, the stairs or something like that, um, or pick out some of the details here. I'm trying to get a kind of very high quality of one effect on each of these pieces, but you could absolutely mix it up so you could base coat some of these areas silver and then have them rusting in that rust running in amongst the, uh, the turquoise. That would look phenomenal. It's a gorgeous color combination anyway, and that's kind of why we've got them both on the same piece. Um, I've just got ivory here from AK, but you could use ivory from Vallejo or just any light color from anyone. We're not doing anything neat apart from at the top and bottom where obviously we don't want to overspill, but the only purpose of this is over a couple of stages just to build up a super bright foundation for our like soon to be followed glowing colors. I'm going to be getting all of the edges with this initially. I'm following the kind of the box art on this and if we can make this fit in camera you can see it's darker around the edges. So that's where my fist on red is going to go. I'm just skirting all of these kind of uh, these edging bits and do take care here. It's a pretty strong color. We're going to have some glow effects going on from these areas, so if you overspill a little bit, don't worry about it too much. Okay, second stage, nice and simple. We're beginning to introduce our rusty colors. Um, so we want this to be glowing orange, but it's really important for us to start from the fist on red, because we need to set it apart from the rust, which is evident elsewhere. The fist on red is super strong, and Troll Slayer is a layer, which they don't have crazy good coverage. So I'm using what I want to look like a 50-50 mix, but really it's literally going to be like three parts Troll Slayer to um, one part Mephiston probably. And that is just going to be gently faded into our previous colour. Uh, now all of this is getting washed, so hopefully this isn't um, 
too unsettled, but um, we can do a little bit of stippling or whatever just to kind of phase it out a little bit more. You'll see that I'm kind of feathering it towards, um, towards the previous color, allowing the brush to split over the filament and that is going to give it a little bit more of a subtle bend. It's all going to get washed anyway and stuff like that, so hopefully this will kind of fade into the background, but we're just shrinking the area that we've got remaining and going over this white, these colors should come out a little bit brighter. You can kind of see what I'm going for there. That's how it looks from the front, just shrinking this area. Uh, it starts off wider at the top, so that's why there's a bit of a kind of a, like an hourglass shape going on. Um, I'm just going to phase my way through my super bright colors. Uh, in exactly the same way that I have been here from the deep red to the troll slayer. So we need to look pretty good now. I'm just gonna jump in with a little bit of yellow. You'll see that I've been adding some fluorescent orange from Vallejo to the mix. Um, I've just been doing really thin layers basically over this and probably noticed that when I was working before, things weren't exactly smooth, and you can definitely tell if I get close up here, stuff's not smooth, but the effect we've gone for, we've just used that Fire, Fire Dragon Bright, the little bit of the fluorescent yellow from Vallejo in there, and we've just done several thin steps, and because it is a layer paint, it's not super opaque anyway, and as a result, you can get away with just kind of um, repeating steps again and again with a really thin watered down paint and it will gradually kind of smooth things out and get into a stage that you want. So like this, end my strokes in the middle. It's a great way to kind of do first attempts at layering. I love paint and terrain, it's extremely forgiving. So the important thing is call your lift off point. I'm just ending my stroke in the middle. So that's where the most paint will be deposited. And repetition as ever. It's really fast as well. I've got a hairdryer off to the side. That makes a big difference, but this allows you to kind of transition through a load of different colors. And we really want these to look super duper glowy. And this is how we're going to achieve it. These layers are starting to build up beautifully now, just super quickly going through. And particularly once you put down a couple, they really do dry mega fast. So if I show you here, this is the type of stuff I'm doing. Again, it doesn't look mega precise. It's not exactly kind of like super technical painting, just putting it down rough in the right place. While that's going on, using the side of my brush, again, kind of helped out because things are thinned down. I can start putting down some foundations which are gonna help with the highlighting of the uh, rings or bars or filaments or whatever you call them in general. And by the time I've done that side, the layer in the middle is almost dry. So that shows how quickly this is going. Really, really starting to kind of reap the benefits of the uh, just the patient uh, building up of this stuff. Now, I'm gonna grab a bit of fluoro yellow and add that to the mix. And then that will be it for kind of the underlay stages. So this won't be hugely kind of overtly obvious what it's doing, but it will help smooth out transitions and make the recesses a little bit darker. Okay, so with the foundations for our glowing really set, it's time to introduce a little bit of dry brushing. I've got the same ivory color here, but again, this could be could be white or whatever. I'm just choosing something that I know will go on smoothly. And with quite a lot of care, I'm gonna be hitting the areas that I'd like to be glowing the most. So for me, that's gonna mean concentrating on the middles of these bars and also their edges. Uh, I'm not doing this particularly directionally. I just want them to be glowing in general. So no need to kind of like hit it from any specific direction like I sometimes would do with this type of stuff. And then when your paint is at a stage where you're really happy there's not too much on the brush, what I'm gonna be doing is picking a few areas that are kind of surrounding the piece where I think the light would manage to reach from it, and I'm gonna be hitting them with a little bit of pre-shading, uh, just a little. And so I'm gonna be kind of repeating this enough that I build up a decent amount of pre-shading in the middle of these bars and hit all of the edges, which I will fade slightly, so there'll be brighter white edges here and only lightly hit edges there. So we've got some of our two different fluoro colors, the orange and the yellow on our palette. I'm grabbing some Cassandora yellow, and we're gonna be preparing a separate glaze for both the areas that are further back from our model. Nice and thin, you don't want this particularly pooling in recesses, you want it just 
filtering the entire area. So it, it is meant to be a glaze, this is not meant to be a wash. You want the same, same thickness of it everywhere and that thickness is very, very, very thin. So I'll hit that on all of the shaded areas of the filament and then we'll prepare a version over this side with the fluoro yellow in it, which will be much lighter. And that is for very thin use over all the sections that we didn't catch with the first one. So if you're working quickly, then with a thumb, fairly delicately, I can just, or a finger, I can just run my, run my way down these central sections, knock it back to that white, which is going to give the impression of that kind of heavy glowing that we're after. Then with that knocked back, we can just take pure fluoro yellow, dilute it a little bit with water, and skim that over those very central sections that we want to be glowing the brightest. There we go, looks super warm. Now for our blue SL, we don't get the use of a blue fluorescent paint because they're not quite as potent as the kind of the traditional like highlighter colors. So we're just gonna be going for a fairly kind of conventional sequence of GW paints. What I am gonna be doing though, is I'm gonna be starting pretty much on our lightest color. And the reason for that is this is the most important bit in terms of whether it jumps out or not. So I wanna get this right and then I'll work uh, my way to the others. So working from the center, I'm just gonna start layering up with Baharoff Blue, a couple of thin layers all over. So as with the, um, the glowy orange, for each stage of this, what I'm doing to kind of build up the layers is I'm doing one, this is Ariman Blue and our Baharoff Blue. Let's say I'm looking to take it from the Baharoff through to the Ahriman. I'll do a couple of layers of a 50-50 mix and build that up. And then what I'll do once that's there is to kind of more seamlessly blend it in. I'll go back to our straight Baharoff blue, plenty of water here, and then that is just layered over the top. And this kind of smooth milky glaze and what that's gonna do is just help us phase nicely from one to the other. These are layer paints, so they're not super opaque, and that is just gonna allow us to kind of build up a smoothish transition. But if it's not perfect, it doesn't matter because what's really gonna kind of grab the attention of people viewing it is the bright lines around the edges. As with the previous method, when I'm doing the glazing steps with the lightest color in the middle, I'm gonna take the edge of my brush and use this to lay some foundations for the starts of our highlights. So, as you're smoothing out, once you get the right amount of paint on your brush where there's not too much and you're not worried about it going badly, then flop it over to its side and start grabbing your edges. Okay, so for our wash, for the blue, we're gonna use one of the least potent contrast paints available, which is a thematic blue. It is extremely um, weak. Uh, it does look lovely over metal, though, as you can even see on my palette here, this is one of the reasons I like playing around on a palette. You do discover things that you wouldn't do otherwise. So I'm using it pretty thin, and every single one of the sections that we've hit in the blue is gonna be kind of covered with this as a filter. So we're not looking for it to pull in the recesses massively, you wanna hit it all over. This has been dry brushed with, um, with white in exactly the same way as we handled our orange, and like our orange, the surrounding areas have also been dry brushed with white, so hopefully we should be able to give the effect of uh, OSL by um, just uh, having those white sections punched through a little bit more aggressively, and this should also help filter our, uh, our absolutely kind of crisp highlighted sections and make sure they do remain in the blue spectrum. So all over. Um, probably in a couple of thin coats at least, maybe even three. I've just got a bit of blue horror here. It's always a struggle with blue, highlighting it up to make it look glowy. Uh, demands a kind of a more aggressive approach to contrast than you would do with other colors, I think, just because it's it's harder to get actual glowing colors. I rely on fluorescence quite a lot for a lot of the stuff that really stands out for us. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna scoot around kind of these surrounding areas. They've ended up a bit glossy because of the athematic uh, blue wash, so, I'm gonna lightly dry brush them with the colors that we've used on here just to kind of pick them up and detract from that because I don't want it to look shiny. I want it to look uh, kind of coherent with the rest of the model. All right, 
So these look brilliant. So much contrast on both of them. I got some cool uh, overspill effects from the dry brushing and the glazing that we've done on both of them. Uh, I think probably slightly more successful here because I've, I've gone a, a little bit more delicately than I did with the blue, but buckets of contrast and all of that, these techniques you could you could mix around wherever. So you could be using vertigree weathering on uh, the iron sections, the rusty weathering on the gold bronzy sections. You could use this OSL next to them, this. You could use this OSL next to this. Um, it's kind of a, an interchangeable full comprehensive set of just like sci-fi aged terrain with weathering and glowing 101. So hopefully you find that useful. Do let me know if you've got any questions. Uh, really, uh, really flexible techniques there and you could apply them universally wherever you like and they're great fun as well. So you've seen them spinning around all fancy with actual lighting and focus so you don't need to see these again but they turned out really really well. Um, both of them really strong in their own rights. Obviously what we did on this um, on this one, we did on this area on the other one. I think uh, kind of notably uh, the difference between the two is I used a smaller brush for the weathering on this one for more of the steps. I think that made it turn out a bit more neat and a bit more precise. So <laughs> whereas my verdigree weathering is a little bit kind of uh, rough and ready, I've been a bit more precise with the second one. It didn't take many more time, I just used a smaller brush and uh, I think that's had a really positive effect. But um, all of the parts of it you can chop and change and move around with each other. You could be chucking in dry brushing stages uh, more regularly to kind of keep that metallic stuff looking super shiny or you can knock it back loads by using multiple washes of just uh, just paint I used often so that Doomball Brown uh, initial stage weathering the iron is super super effective and what that adds to your kind of capabilities coming up is that you put down a metallic layer you dry brush it it's mega shiny then you knock it all back with this wash and then when you dry brush it with metallics only on the raised areas they look all the more shiny because they stand out more in comparison to the rest of it so it's a, just a selection a really broad selection of amazing techniques if you're going to tackle an imperial knight or kind of a rusted orc vehicle or anything like that all of these are perfect and then it's just personal preference if you want to pull some turquoise in then do some verdigree if you want to choose some uh, kind of like your vehicle's gold but you really want to get some rusty colors on there just mix it around like you don't know what alloy that metal is you can do whatever you like so please give the video a like if you've liked it please comment let us know what you'd like to see for our next videos we're getting quite a wide variety of requests at the moment flesh is being requested quite a lot so i'll probably be tackling that soon also getting some requests for freehand and stuff like that uh, please hit that bell notification so you are notified of our future content and um, just uh, carry on getting stuck in the comments you really really appreciate all of your input and uh, terrain like this is the result of kind of you guys giving us feedback and we're going in a direction uh, that has been requested the most regularly. Cheers.